in the debut of their very clean City jerseys. Steph Curry picked it up in the fourth, but overall had a rare off night. Thankfully for fans in the Bay, their number one ranked defense stepped up and Dubs breakout player Jordan Poole exploded for 31 points and was also a game high plus 28. In addition to the wet night from Poole, Wiggins, Bielitsa, Damian Lee, and Gary Payton II combined for a vital 50 points against Charlotte. Before the Warriors improved to 6-1, Clay warmed up in his full jersey, and with the return of the second Splash Brother looming, it's become clear that the Warriors have an elite supporting cast around both the NBA's all-time leader in single-game three-pointers made in Clay, and of course the greatest shooter ever in Steph. This is DFlow Hoops. Welcome. If you're looking for NBA hot takes, predictions, and stories on a wide range of teams and players, you came to the right place. If you're an NBA fan, subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up on this video for the YouTube algorithm. The Hornets ranked number one in points per game when they flew into the Bay Area, but the Warriors ended up holding them to their lowest scoring output of the season at 92. Both teams combined to miss 13 of their first 18 shots from the field, yet one Warrior managed to carry the scoring load. Jordan Poole knocked in an early three and scored the team's first eight points setting the stage for the 22-year-old's best game of the season. Poole had been slumping recently, shooting under 50% from the field in the three games prior to this one. While it's going to take time for Poole to adjust to his new role, Jordan displayed against Charlotte that he's more than capable of being the Warriors' second scorer for now. We can't forget, it's only JP's third year in the league, and he's going to have his off nights, but the steady progression in terms of his stats through his young career so far has been impressive. Pools vamped his points per game from 9 in year 1 to 12 in year 2, and now 16.4 in year 3. The 29th pick from 2019's draft was All-NBA G League third team last season, posting 22 points and 5 assists per game in Santa Cruz. But Jordan's goals are evidently much higher, with a couple years of pro experience under his belt. This year's preseason saw Jordan post 23-3 on over 50% shooting, from Smitty dribbles to his overall shiftiness, creating offense in both isos and pick and roll scenarios. Right off the bat, the pool was already looking wetter compared to the player we saw in his rookie and sophomore years. Jordan's dribble combinations have become much tougher to predict, and the balance and shooting stroke on his jumper looks more fundamentally sound than ever before. That was on full display against Charlotte, where the man was letting it fly like his all-time great partner in the backcourt. Not only is Poole's production and shooting stroke resembling Steph right now, but purely the man's confidence has been superstar-esque. Another factor to his game that can't not be mentioned is how impactful Jordan's defense is looking. Kid's extremely pesky and is an utter annoyance for any attacking player from the start to the end of possessions. Jordan's constantly harassing his matchup, which led to him posting four steals against Charlotte. The man leaves every bit of stamina out there on the floor for his teammates, along with coach Steve Kerr. Speaking of Steve Kerr, Poole's really helping his coach limit Stephen Curry's minutes because before Poole's development this season, Golden State's offense would plummet anytime the NBA's leading scorer would take a seat on the pine. In 2021-22 so far, Poole's ability to take the pressure off the four other players next to him keeps a rhythm to the Warriors offense, all while crucially allowing Curry to rest up for when it matters most in the fourth quarter. Not only is it vital that Poole's keeping Curry fresh within the constitute of a single game, but through the 82-game grind, having another elite bucket manufacturer like Jordan is going to keep our game's most entertaining player in Curry fresh for the postseason. There's a long way to go, but the Warriors are currently tied with the Utah Jazz for the number one seed in their conference, while the backcourt of Steph and Poole have done their fair share of putting the team on their back, the early success for the Dubs wouldn't be happening without these pieces who complete the Warriors' elite supporting cast. Backup shooting guard, the undrafted product of Louisville and Damian Lee, is having a most improved player of the year type campaign. 
Among MIP candidates early on, like Miles Bridges, Desmond Bain, Ja Morantz, and Harrison Barnes, Damien's case for being in the early race for that award is definitely there. Lee's the Warrior's most valuable role player. He's an excellent off-ball cutter who excels at running off pin downs and catching his matchups leaping. That ability with the Warriors' off-ball movement-heavy offensive scheme makes Damien's playing style the ideal fit in Golden State. Damien's got very solid lateral quickness, but out of every area where he provides value, Damien's three-point shooting is probably his best quality. Twice in his young career, Lee's made 40% of his shots from beyond the arc. In 21-22, along with 14 points per game, Lee's taking a career-most five deep-range attempts each night and is knocking down 50% of those shots. Here's hoping Damien stays on fire for the dubs. The 15th man, Gary Payton II, has earned the admiration and a hug from his coach Steve Kerr. The son of an NBA legend and one of the greatest guard defenders of all time, Gary's carrying on the legacy of his pops in the Bay. Throwing down a ridiculous poster, ending Kelly Oubre's life, Payton's not only showed off his springy elite hops, but he displayed some of his old man's patented defensive ability. Steph and Steve have raved about Gary's impact, and he should be a key role player for them all year. Before breaking down the recent shoot around from Klay Thompson, I want to give credit to another role player on Golden State who seems to never get any praise. The pristine screen setting, solid pick and roll defense, plus rebounding from Kevon Looney, goes completely under the radar. Kavon's extremely, extremely consistent, and his 16 minutes of solid play at the Vive have been a big part of the Warriors ranking number one in defensive rating so far. Combined with Poole, Damian, Peyton, and Kavon, there's Nemanja Bialica, Andrew Wiggins, Otto Porter Jr., and Andre Iguodala, who fill out the rotation players around the Warriors' current big three of Steph, Draymond, and Poole. Soon, however, Poole's going to be pushed out of the big three when Clay returns, and Jordan is likely going to be relied upon as the sixth man. That would be a great role for Poole, given his electric, streaky scoring, and once Clay returns, Poole being a Lou Williams type guy who can, of course, defend unlike Lou Will, is probably best for the Warriors offense. You need Andrew Wiggins at the three because of his size and defense, and bringing Jordan off the bench would just make sense. Because with how he's looking after two major surgeries, I think Clay's about to be back to the player he was in the mid 2010s. I know Thompson suffered two career changing injuries, but having a full two years off has actually helped the now 31 year olds build up less NBA mileage. Clay's an absolute legend as he holds the NBA record for three-pointers made in a single game and points in a single quarter. He was an all-NBA defender back in his prime, and while I expect that part of his game to slightly fall off, I expect Steve Kerr to perfectly ease him back into the game in terms of his minutes played, and eventually, I'm predicting we're going to see the best version of Clay we've ever seen. Even if that doesn't happen, he's going to open up everything for Steph, and I expect Curry to play a lot better once Thompson returns. Let me know your thoughts on the Warriors' blistering 6-1 start in the comments. Let's be friends. Make sure you're following the channel on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. That's at dflowhoops on both platforms. Hope you have a great one. This was dflow, and I'll see you next video.